Well, good morning and welcome to the premiere episode of SPI Chamber today. We are so excited to be here. I'm Alita Bagley. I'm the president of the South Padre Island Chamber of Commerce. And this is my partner in crime, Diana Harville. She is the marketing director for the chamber. And we wanna welcome you today to the Art Business Incubator on lovely South Padre Island. Oh, it's pretty cool being here, isn't it, Diana? It is. Yeah, it it's is. a beautiful day. Oh, it is, it's a wonderful day. Chamber of Commerce Day, most exactly. definitely. Exactly. So um, we're gonna we're gonna take a tour of the gallery. We're going to meet some of the artists, and of course, we're gonna talk to the lovely Deanna Powell, who is the program director. Uh, but first, well, let's see. I don't know, Diana. What have you got going on? <laughs> <laughs> well, last night we had our first. We're we've done lots of first at the chamber yeah. these days. Uh, we had contacts and cocktails at the beautiful Holiday Inn oh, Resort. Yes. Uh, they have done a lot of renovations, remodeling with the new ownership and their lobby is beautiful. It really is. So we had a wonderful time last night, everybody that attended. Right. And if you weren't there, you missed it. You did miss it. You may not get a second chance. Yeah. Now you probably will. Maybe. We'll right. see. Right. Maybe with the bongos, maybe not. We'll oh, see. there we go. Yeah. Yes. The bongos, uh, yeah. Dan, the groove man. He is a new chamber member, and of course the Holiday Inn is a chamber member as well, uh, but he was great. He was so interactive. He had us all dancing and playing bongos and those shaker things that make noise. It was a lot of fun. It was fun. Yes. It was. We probably embarrassed ourselves. If you saw our Facebook posting, we probably did embarrass ourselves, but Diane and I are used to that. We don't mind. And I promise that I will teach her how to do YMCA before yeah. we do the next event. I didn't know how to do the way. seat anyway. Yeah, yeah, there we go. We, we digress. Little Sorry. Back. Yeah, a little back there. But anyway, and then this morning we had a uh, social security strategies mm -hmm. class. Uh, I know a lot of people think, oh, well, I don't need to pay attention to that. And it's like, well, it's going to come sooner than you realize, uh, such as my case. Uh, and learned a lot of really interesting information and also the main thing is there is no such thing as being too young uh, you really do need because that's a part of hopefully not all of but part of your your chance to retire someday so uh, but that was a really good class we had um, 13 people that yeah. signed up for it so right. that was really good and, and there were some millennials there because, of yes. course, they know that eventually they're going to get old. Um, some of us are already there, but yeah. yeah, it's never too early to plan. And that's a great example of some of the, the uh, classes that the chamber holds for its members, giving, you know, really useful information that we all need. And uh, so always keep track and, and check your uh, chamber newsletter and chamber Facebook posting for new and upcoming events that we're gonna be having and then you won't miss out the next time. That's right. All right. Right. <sighs> so what else you got going on? Um, well, I guess the biggest project of the year is the, uh, it started on the South Padre Island Guide, or the Guide to South Padre Island. Oh, that's uh, a good one. The uh, award win, by the yes. way. Award winning. First place. First place in the state of Texas. Chamber of Commerce media competition last year. Right. So uh, we've entered again this year, so wish us luck on winning again. Uh, started making phone calls, sending out emails. So like I said, if I don't call you, be sure and call me, uh, although I'll probably get around to you. And if I do, when I do call you, just, just say yes. You definitely want to be in there. I mean, we print 100,000 copies that are sent all over the United States and Canada. Right. So, I mean, that's... You don't want to miss out. You don't out. want to miss out on that. You want your business promoted, this yeah. is the way to do it. And I just happened to have a copy of the beautiful 80 page full color. And if you could if you could reach through right now and feel the, the cover on this, it's like sand. That was one of Diana's designs. But it's a beautiful guide and you know, everything now is on the internet. 
but people still like to have a book that they can take with them, they can flip through it. And it's not just the island, there are sections in here of our neighbors, Brownsville, Harlingen. So it's really a, a great publication and we hope that you all will take the opportunity to be in it this year. Diana comes up with the design on the front page. Who knows what the design will be this year, but I'm sure it will be just <laughs> as beautiful as the rest. So, well, that's great. Um, yeah, we have a lot of stuff going on at the Chamber and what we're doing here today, we're super excited about. We are going to be doing these episodes of SPI Chamber today, every week, and we will be focusing and visiting our member businesses and showing you all about their business so that you can learn more about our Chamber member businesses. So make sure you tune in every week and uh, Thursdays at 10 a.m. Thursdays at 10 a.m. That's right. Come, you know, water, rain, snow, sleet, whatever. We will be here. Um, so, as I mentioned, today we are at the uh, Art Business Incubator, or as we affectionately call it, the Abbey. And we have with us the beautiful and lovely Deanna Powell, who is the program director. So. Deanna, you want to come on over here and see y'all next see. week? <laughs> it's so good to see you. Good to see you too. So I, I, I told Deanna before we started, I don't like sitting next to beautiful younger women than me. So she is going to try to not look so beautiful, you know, so that I can shine. Uh, but anyway, Deanna, anyway, Deanna is a wonderful person. She is just. Uh, has done a fabulous job here at the Abbey. So, Deanna, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, well, thank you for mm -hmm. visiting the Art Business Incubator right. for the first of this really exciting series. Um, so, for those that don't know me, my name is Deanna Powell, and um, I grew up in Dallas, and I graduated from Texas A&M with a, a degree in communication and a minor in art. Oh. But immediately after college, I've had a lot of different professional experiences. I was uh, previously in sales. I worked at the Dallas Convention and Visitors Bureau. And then I was also the head coach of a gym in Indiana. Oh, wow. So I've done a lot of things. And surprisingly, everything has added up perfectly for this role as a program director. Um, and I've been challenged in really exciting ways that interest me. And working with artists has genuinely, I can say this genuinely, has made me an overall better person. Oh, and, that's and better for being around them. Yeah. Well, you are definitely a woman of many talents, as we can <laughs> see. So, uh, can you give us a little bit of history about the Abbey? Yeah. So, um, the Art Business Incubator officially launched in November 2019. Okay. Um, the program director who really launched this off the ground is Alexa Ray, and she's still very much involved. She's actually now on our board of directors, okay. and I rely on her really often mm -hmm. for some really pivotal advice. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, our first residency class, really uh, most of their year was taken up uh, by the pandemic in 2020. So although it was a really exciting start, it was limited. Um, so it's been super exciting to see over the past year, I, I joined this, I, I received this role um, July 2020, so almost a year ago. I've been here almost a year, wow. and it's been really exciting to see all the visitors come in year after year. We have a few who discovered us right there in 2020, yeah. and they love coming back to visit all of the new artists. Oh, that's great. That is really wonderful. Yes, we know Alexa very well. Um, young, wonderful young lady, very talented as well, and I know that she did a great job in getting the Abbey, Abbey started. Yeah. Now, you all had something to do, um, did the EDC have a part, the, the South Potter Island Economic Development yes. Corporation had a part in this? Yes, absolutely. So that's kind of where the idea really bloomed. Mm -hmm. um, and we still receive support from the EDC and we're so grateful for it without without their, you know, without them, I mean, this really wouldn't have 
even happened. We also have a really great angel investor who really believes in this mission. So we're supported by not only the EDC and an angel investor, but just all of the visitors who come in are yes. incredibly inspired by the mission. So it's been really nice to be welcomed by yes. visitors. Yes, well, I know the community fully supports. I mean, this is wonderful. I, you know, I, I've been thinking so much about coming here for, for this interview today, and I thought, you know, we could be the art mecca, a new art mecca of Texas. Yep. And you know, for a tourist destination like we are, it's, I know when we used to travel, we would go to art galleries and always buy, you know, something mm -hmm. to take home as a memory of that trip. So I think it's just absolutely fabulous that the art, art world is taking off on South Padre Island. It's just another wonderful amenity for our visitors. But then also, it's so great for our community. I mean, I, I know I've never been an artist, but you, you probably can't change that, but I would sure love to try sometime. Yes, absolutely. Everybody is a little bit creative, mm -hmm. and that's what it's all about, is just getting creative. Right. Um, yeah. Let so those creative juices flow. Yes, right. it's good for your well-being, it's good for a community, mm -hmm. and there's actually a lot of science and statistics about how art improves the longevity of a community, and not only for the tourists and the visitors, but for the people who live here right. at home. Right, yes, well it, it certainly makes it a more wonderful place to live, having, having places like this. So I know that you have events, you, I know you have artists and residents, and we are going to meet them in a few minutes. Um, but you also have events for the community where people can come in and take different classes. Can you tell us something about that? Yeah, so part of the residency requirements is that as an artist, you host at least one art class a month. Oh, so we okay. have quite a few and mm -hmm. our art classes are always changing as the artists come and go over the course of a year. Mm -hmm. So right now we have um, I would say probably forever, we'll always have a painting class mm -hmm. or a drawing class. People love to learn that. They're really drawn to the basics of art. Right. But it's really exciting because we also have, with each unique artist, some really unique classes come along. So we have a really beautiful and fun and challenging paper cutting class where you create your own pop image of a local uh, flora or fauna, or I know this upcoming class, you're gonna create a spoonbill. Oh, um, that's, that yeah, sounds fun. It's really fun and it comes framed and everything. Mm -hmm. We also have a leather artist, so you have the opportunity to create and stamp your own leather goods. So previously we've had our own coin decorating or coin purse decorating class. Oh, okay. Yeah, where you actually make it yourself and you paint it with particular paint made just for leather. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we also have a metal smith here. So we're gonna have some metal stamping where you create your own um, basically tokens that you can use for jewelry or keychains and just a really great way to personalize right. your items. That is so great. So your artists, how long are they here for? And, and it, could you explain the program just a little bit? Yeah, so our artists are here for a year. We have rolling admissions. So it's really exciting because that's a chance for each year's class to connect with the incoming artists with the rolling admissions. So we'll accept two artists every month, February, March, and April. And um, they're here for one whole year. And in that time, they receive a $1,000 supply stipend for them to wow. purchase art supplies that they need. Um, they receive monthly stipends. Um, they receive a scholarship to UTRGV's Kaufman Fast Track, which is like a mini yes. MBA course. Mm -hmm. Um, and honestly, just a lot of other resources, um, and particularly one that I love most of all because it makes my days and this place so fun to visit is that they actually get free working space here in the gallery. So yes. not only do are all of the items that you see for sale and on display made by artists in the residency, but you can come and see their workstation, you can see what projects they're in the middle of, and really get a good sneak peek into their creative process. Oh, that is so exciting. And how many artists do you have in residence at a time? We aim between four and six. Um, our building isn't sustainable for more than six, um, but we like to have at least four every year. Okay, well that is so exciting for them to have this opportunity. Now, do you work with them like on a business plan? 
um, you know, not just the artists, because you know, there's there's the left brain and there's the right brain. I, I'm not sure which I am. I'm, I'm sure you're both. Uh, listening to all of your experience, yes, I'm sure you're both. But you know, not only uh, is the art important, and they're obviously have a natural talent somewhere in there, but not all of us have a natural talent to go out and take that and turn it into a business. Mm -hmm. So do you work with them as well, or do, or do you offer opportunities for them to learn about starting a business? And Absolutely. So they're not just made to, or they're not just missioned to come here and create art. They're tasked with studying how their art is experienced by the visitors. Mm -hmm. So um, they, I mean, every day is a learning opportunity and they really are studying the products of theirs that they create that end up leaving mm -hmm. with the visitors. But on top of that, they do receive really hands-on textbook knowledge about creating a business plan, the bare minimum and basics all the way to, you know, if you want to take this thing corporate, they, they right. receive a lot of business training yeah. and that is through the Kaufman UTRGB mm -hmm. uh, Fast Track. So yes. they go through a seven week course um, and they actually, some representatives from UTRGB come here mm -hmm. and they, they teach us in the gallery about what it's like to create a business plan, all the essentials that you need. And then after that, they create a business plan and they put what they learned to the test um, and that is to be approved and reviewed by our board of directors to make okay. sure that every artist is going to continue to fulfill the mission right. as best they can. Right. Well, that's wonderful that you have UTRGV. They are such an amazing resource. The, the chamber, we have partnered, partnered with them quite often in educational business classes and we're so thankful that they're there. They're so great to work with and always, you know, ready and willing to help us in any way they can. So that's wonderful. How many members do you have on the board of directors? We have six. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And I know several of them. Yeah. So I think uh, it they're seems, all community members. Yes, they are community <laughs> members. It seems like you have a nice uh, variety of, of people on the board. So that's great because, you know, having a good board and good leadership is obviously so important for a successful venture like this so yeah you're very fortunate Truly, uh, at I, least for the ones i know that are on there you're very blessed to have them you're completely right i'm the person but in the middle between the artists and right. the board and i'm really lucky that both sides are really easy to work with and are really inspired to make this a you, you have a dream job. I do. I tell everybody. I tell everybody I have the best job. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good one. I thought mine was really good, but I don't know. I think yours is mm, that's pretty close there. Um, so do you have any plans for the immediate future or the long distance future mm -hmm. that, that you've thought about that you would like to implement? Yeah, a little uh, both. Um, for this year, I would really like to elaborate on our Art Fest, which is a local pop up market of over 40 local makers and artists from across the Rio Grande wow, Valley. Oh, how great! Yeah, it's really exciting. It has completely blown up. We, you know, the vendor spots, you know, they're, they're completely filled within a week wow. and it's, wow. it's incredible because and, and honestly I, I genuinely don't take any credit it's the artists who really take this program seriously and they've inspired so many people in the valley to take mm -hmm. themselves seriously mm -hmm. as an artist and as a professional so it just speaks to the artists that are in the program they're really leading the way but um, so my, my, my short term goals is to elaborate on the upcoming October Art Fest. Last year we did a very small pop up pumpkin patch and we oh, had yeah. hundreds yes. of visitors that yes. day. That was a great event. Yeah, and it was very last minute. Mm -hmm. I was literally put it together in three weeks and we had the Port Isabel Walmart. They helped us mm -hmm. by donating a few of those pumpkins. So. Um, I'd really like to elaborate on that again this year mm -hmm. to help it make it an even bigger family mm -hmm. event and just a bigger asset to the island. Oh, I think that's wonderful. So when will your Art Fest, do you have a date set for that? Yes. So we used to do it every month on a small scale, mm -hmm. but we realized we can serve the island better and we can serve the artists better by doing less but on a bigger scale. Uh, mm -hmm. So this year we just had one previously. Our next one is June 11th. 
And then after that, we'll do one in October and then one again in November. Okay, so June 11th, put that on your calendars because it's gonna be a wonderful event and uh, we'll all be here and join with you and it'll, it's just gonna be a lot of fun. It's really uh, fun. Anything long-term that you're thinking about doing? Long-term, I would like, I don't have experience in this, although I know I don't necessarily need it. I have a lot of support and resources in it, but I would like to establish a fundraising event. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have one currently. Mm -hmm. And so right now, with the support of our, the EDC and the Angel Investor, um, you know, we are, we are more than set for the future. However, I would really like to contribute in my own way with an event and something that engages the community that allows us to, to completely elevate this program and therefore the artists. All right. Well, we're here to help you on anything. Uh, isn't she adorable? <laughs> I just love her. And I mean, how easy is this? It's our first episode, and we've got a good one here that can just take the ball and roll with it. Well, Deanna, thank you for all the great information. And uh, we're going, I believe that she is going to give us a tour of the gallery. Absolutely. And I think we have some artists and residents over here that are waiting to talk to us. So we'll find out a little about them. And thank you again, Deanna. Um, Let's go for it. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to say while we're while you have a captive audience? <laughs> um, come on over. There we're open go. every day of the week, eleven to seven. You get to meet the artists themselves, and if you like their work, you get to buy from them directly, and it's really special. There you go. Well, let's go. Give us a All turn. All right, come on over. So I'm actually going to start with um, the studio spaces because I think that is the best way to really get a good idea of all of the work and all of the personalities that are here at the Art Business Incubator. So we have six artists here. And starting here with Audrey Larissa, she is a painter and a uh, drawer. She creates really stunning images in oil uh, pencil. So she has a very bright, bold, vivid style. And a lot of people have compared her work to uh, Van Gogh's style. Yeah. I've seen a lot of people make comments on that. Mm -hmm. But what she really, really focuses on when she paints is actually doing everything she can to paint from her subconscious. And if that's something that's kind of, you know, hard to get a grasp on, it's just a, it's, a, it's an intuitive way of painting. It's truly deliberately entering a flow state and um, painting from a point of view that uh, so often we aren't even aware of. Um, oh, that would be scary for me trying yeah. to paint from my subconscious. There's no telling what would come out. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's, it's, a, it's a really brave and courageous thing so to do. So she did, um, she's done all of these? Yeah, yeah. Wow. She went to school and um, has a BFA. She was a, a soccer athlete too in college. So she's just really hardworking. Yeah, great. And then this is Eva Ryan, um, who is actually here today. Oh, we're gonna get to meet Eva. Yep. <laughs> so she is a paper cutting artist and she is local to the RGB. Um, she has a really incredible and inspiring reason for how she got started. She was um, in social work and had experienced a lot of um, not experienced, but had had heard a lot of really hard stories from the people she was helping. And she would bring work home with her and that wasn't working and that wasn't helping her or anybody, right? So her uh, colleagues encouraged her to uh, take up art and this is what she's landed upon. And oh, wow. I'm really grateful for it because it's not only stunning, but all of her pieces always have a really gorgeous narrative that's very optimistic, very hopeful, and it really speaks to the future she wants to see for the world, right? right. So oh, that's beautiful. Her work is meticulous. It is non-forgiving. It is um, a reduction art. So she starts right with a flat piece of paper and then carves away at it. Um, so she, it's very kind of geometric in a way, but she also creeps, creates a lot of organic uh, line work in it so it's it's beautiful and I don't know how she does it <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to ask her does she get paper cuts 
You know, when you use scissors, you get oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a good question. But I understand what you're saying, non forgiving because look at the detail on this. And boy, you make one wrong cut. Yeah. And, and you start over, I guess. Right. Wow. That's exactly right. That's really interesting. Yeah. It's just amazing the talent that people have. Yeah, it's just, true. I'm so in awe of it. Yeah, a lot of people who walk into our gallery, um, they're, they're completely in awe. And there's been quite a few who have never been in an art gallery right. before. So it's like they've witnessed magic. Right. <laughs> they, they, they're really inspired to see somebody creating. Well, yes, to be able to be here and see their, you know, their workspace, get to meet them and see them actually doing their art. You don't typically get to see that. You go into a gallery and you see it's everything already there and looking, you know, beautiful. But mm -hmm. you don't you don't know so much of the background. That's and, true. And actually see the process that they go through to, to create this. That's true. It's pretty amazing. So Jose Lozano, he has also been local to the RGB. Mm -hmm. um, he graduated from. Uh, uh, UT RGB with the BFA as well. And, and what is BFA? Bachelor of Fine Arts. Fine Arts. Okay, yep. there yep. you go. That's how much I know about art. <laughs> Did you know what a BFA was? Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> Not everyone knows. Not everyone Not knows. Everyone knows. Now they all know. That's right. So Jose is a ceramicist and a painter. He is really inspired by classical work, but he really pushes it um, in a way that is subtle, but completely evocative and very forward. Um, and a, with a voice completely of his own. So um, he's a really fun person to talk to because, especially if you take his class, you genuinely learn about the history of art and how it has evolved to today. Um, so this is some of his recent work. I've watched him evolve this painting. He layers color and color and color and He's very precise about where he lays the paintbrush as well. So um, he's not one of those uh, particularly messy artists. His station is, if you can imagine, this is the messiest I've ever seen it. And it's pristine. <laughs> and um, yeah, he's really inspired to paint the island more and more. Uh, mm -hmm. Yesterday he was here and he had his camera and he was going to take inspiration photos for his next painting. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. Really nice. Lozano Fine Art. Lozano Fine Art. Lozano. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Mm -hmm. And he does ceramics? Yep, he okay. does ceramics too. So he's actually going to have his first sculpture type class uh, in June. Mm -hmm. And it's an air dry clay, so you don't you can take it home with you right away. Oh. And you'll be making a whale tail, which will be really oh, cute. Don't miss the whale tail. Don't miss the whale tail. You can take it home with you. Yep, that's right. Yes. <laughs> now, it may not look like a whale tail when you get home with it, but we all know that's what it's going to That's what it will be. That's what it will be. <laughs> And then Gloria Reyes, she actually um, is our metalsmith. And this is the first time we've had an artist who creates jewelry and sell in a fine art gallery. So it's super exciting because we've had so many people come to our gallery asking for jewelry and there are many places to get it, but it's just very exciting to have another jeweler on right. the island because yeah. there really aren't that many. Um, and she's got such a dream of showing people that it really can be a viable future for anybody. And it's a skill trade. Mm -hmm. So she has brought all of her tools, none of which I know how to use or explain. <laughs> and don't touch them, you might hurt yourself. Some of them look a little, a little dangerous She's there. got a torch here. She has a torch. <laughs> you don't want to make her mad, no. right? No. You be nice, Absolutely to, you not. Be nice to Gloria. <laughs> but I am wearing necklace. I bought it straight off of her desk before she could even display it. Um, and she just created a really gorgeous uh, bracelet where the, every chain is handmade and it is with an ammonite, which is a fossilized shell. So it's just a really beautiful way of harnessing the, the beauty of a found object. And I mean, I'm sure we all have some little trinket or something at home that's just tiny. And but it means something to you. And so she, for metal smithing, for Gloria, she gets to take that, that sentimental value of something and really honor it. Right, oh, that is, that is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Look at all these tools, my goodness. Wow. 
And she is from, she's from McAllen. Yeah, okay. she's a trooper. She commutes here wow. all the way from McAllen. Yeah. So it really speaks to how important it is for artists to find opportunity. There's not much in the valley, mm -hmm. but there it is growing. And there is because there are more and more opportunities for artists across the Rio Grande Valley. So it's exciting to see. Right. We're actually growing up down here. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's great. All right. This is so fun. I did, this is so exciting. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So Eddie Bell Angel, he uh, is also local to the area. Mm -hmm. Grew up in the Brownsville area in Matamoros. And he has been a artist for quite some time. He's been a really renowned muralist in the area. And so whenever he submitted his portfolio mm -hmm. to apply for the program, the board was really excited yeah, because it. he's very talented, super yes. skilled. So he always, he almost always, I've never seen him paint anything smaller than this. Uh -huh. <laughs> and this is a very large canvas, probably the biggest you can buy at Hobby Lobby or any yeah. other craft store. Mm -hmm. um, but he also is an ink illustrator. So he'll actually draw um, items with black ink and highlight with white as well. So you can see this cute crab. He just made oh. this deer recently as well. Isn't that beautiful? And wow. I mean, genuinely, I think he can paint or draw just about anything. anything. Yeah, he's got thousands of items that he has created over the course of the past, of, over the course of years. And he especially loves to, um, Prioritize portraits. He's mm -hmm. really inspired by drawing the human form That's and beautiful. he does it in a really contemporary way He a lot of times on his canvas. He'll use non-conventional materials mm -hmm. So you you can see him paint on fabric and on and honestly He says he's always looking for, for something, something to paint right. on that somebody else hasn't thought of before. So what is this that he painted on here? I just, I couldn't it looks tell almost you. like um, satin or something. Yeah, isn't it? soft like satin. Uh huh. Yes, that's really beautiful. Yeah, I love the possum. Did you catch the baby possum? They're so adorable. <laughs> How would you like to be George Jones? You know, that's what they called yeah. him. She, I'm sure that that Deanna doesn't know who George Jones is. Yeah, I he's know. an old country singer. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and they called him the possum because he looked like a possum. I guess I thought. Anyway, that I digress cute. again. Okay. That's cute. Well, yes, his Eddie's work is beautiful. Yeah, wow. he's actually created um, some public artwork in Linear Park in Brownsville too. Oh, okay. And these four items that you see on the wall, mm -hmm. those are small scale versions of what he created on the public art installation. Oh, so okay. if you're ever in Brownsville at that park, mm -hmm. at Linear Park, and you see this, you can know that that was an artist who is currently taking up residence in South Padre. Well, that's exciting. And then lastly, we have a leather artist and uh, her name is Dawn and she was previously, uh, in recent years, a shoe cobbler. Is that right? Yes. Um, she did that very successfully. She had her own business. Mm -hmm. She knows what it takes to operate a business. but. What she has always wanted to do for herself is to take leather into fine art. Wow. So no longer is she really in the business of fixing shoes or fixing a buckle or this and that. She's, she's so inspired by the material. And I'm learning a lot about the material that you can literally do anything, anything. with it. And so this is a really experimental year for her where she is going, she has been pushing her her own knowledge and her own limits as far as what she can do with it. So um, this was, we talked about that coin right. decorating, uh -huh. that coin purse decorating mm -hmm. class. In her recent class, she taught you how to make this and she gave you leather, or correct paint for the leather and to actually paint an ocean scene on it. Aww. Really cute, you can keep your shells in it, you can keep your coins in it. Maybe if you just gotta grab your ID or a card and go somewhere with something small in hand, this is perfect. Sure. And her next class, she's gonna teach you how to actually stamp leather. So you're gonna be able to create your own designs or put your own words or initials. And this is actually a really great gift. Mm -hmm. I highly recommend this for a Father's Day gift. Oh yes, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. And how amazing that she's got this opportunity to really grow you know, her artistry from something that was more or less commercial 
Absolutely. into beautiful art and sharing it with others. It's just, this is just amazing. I am totally in awe. Yeah, so, yeah. it really is beautiful. Wow, and so these are some of the fabrics that she wore, the leathers that she works with. and Only a few. Honestly, mm -hmm. I think those are more just decorative. Oh, okay. <laughs> because she has so many rolls of leather oh, in the back. Wow, this is nice. It's soft. <laughs> it's very soft. Right. Oh, okay. And she, this is her machine. Yep, a this sewing is, wow. machine. Um, she is used to some really industrial mm -hmm. machines to create her work. So this is a very small operation for her. And for her, it really is just creative play. And so far, the visitors are loving mm -hmm. what she's creating. I'll bet. So. I'll bet. Well, I expected to come in and see, I don't know, colored pencils, maybe a few cans of paint. Yeah. I had no idea that we were going to have deadly tools, uh, <laughs> huge sewing machines. <laughs> right, right. Yes, well. All right, can we meet? Come on over. All righty. Now, are, are some of these works previous artists? Yeah. Yeah, okay. so we still display some items from the previous year residents. Mm -hmm. um, they're allowed to show some work in our gallery for up to a year after oh, graduating. Okay. So um, this is Eddie's piece, a current mm -hmm. artist, and Audrey Larissa, a current artist. Mm -hmm. But this right here is a printmaker, Christina Piku, who is now the manager at uh, the Art Lounge, which is okay. a new art business yes. that opened up. Yes, we just had a ribbon cutting for them not very long ago. We met Christina. Yep. Yes. I highly recommend going there. Um, not only so you can see more work like this, mm -hmm. but there is a lot of really gorgeous work in there yes. from the previous year residents. They're going to have yoga classes, oh, salsa dancing, and it's going to be just a really awesome hub yes. for anyone who's yes. on the island. It will be. We are going to be going there over the next month or so mm -hmm. and looking at her place and some other art art institutions around yeah. the island. So They're popping they're up. Looking, they really are. They're really, yes. They are. And yes. we actually have another artist who opened up a gallery, Quinn Gallery, mm -hmm. who's next door. She just graduated. She is a modern impressionist painter mm -hmm. and she's almost always focusing on the landscape of South yes. Padre. People love her her yes. work. It is so peaceful and calm. Mm -hmm. It so. is. I've seen some of her work. In fact, I met her at the art lounge. Yes, yes, you did. Yes, you did. I did. And I had met, I can't remember her husband's name, but he does the microgreens. Don? Yes. John. Yeah. John. John. Okay. John. Yes, I met him at the farmer's market. Yep, Little Leaf Farm. So, yes. I, yeah. I buy good this stuff, stuff all the time. Yes, yeah. It's good. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here's some artists right here. <laughs> Gosh, after all this, you know, I think we need to bow or something. That was amazing. Oh, Actually, you so and you're the one that does all the cutouts. Yes. I'm working here and not at my desk because my piece is a little large and I can't really remove maneuver, which is really cool because we have like these big co-working spaces mm -hmm. that we're allowed to use. Um, so, and, and it's really... It's really awesome because I've never been able to work at such a large scale because oh. I I just used to work out of my kitchen. So, oh, okay. yeah. so this, so this feels a whole new like world. a whole new world. Mm -hmm. I'm super excited to be here. And so tell us about this piece. Yeah. And how do you how do you even start with this? Do you how do you come up with your designs and So I'm really inspired by um, the concept of home and, and what that means for each person. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, I grew up in the RGV in Brownsville, in the Rio Grande Valley, and um, I'm really inspired by the local flora and fauna, and this is a cactus piece, mm -hmm. uh, because the cactus have been blooming here, and you can walk up and down the bayside and see tons of cactus, right. and they're just gorgeous right yes. now. So I decided to cut, cut a cactus piece. Um, but generally I'll start by illustrating it, so I'll like actually illustrate it on the back. And so I'll draw the cactus um, and then I'll cut it out with an X-Acto knife. Um, so the yeah, detail cutting all those is little incredible. spaces. Um, and then the, the typical way to do paper cutting is just black on white or like one, one color on another color. But mm -hmm. I really like to go the extra mile and fill, fill in my pieces because I think they add it just adds some like color and vibrancy mm -hmm. and dimension yeah. yeah so this one's gonna have green cactus 
and the little flowers, the tunas are all going to be um, in all these different shades. That's so that's amazing. what I'm working on. <laughs> so how long, like how long has it taken you to get from just your paper to this point right now? It takes a long time. I'm sure it does. <laughs> it takes an absolutely long time. I think it's, it, this has been on my table for over a month. So wow. it's been... So yeah, you must I'm have the patience of Job to do this, girl. <laughs> it's very calming to me. Uh, um, well, it's, it's, which is why I do it, right? That's, it is so absolutely, I mean, intricate. I just can't imagine doing that in the detail. And it's all cut out. It is. So how long do you think it'll take until you finish it? I haven't, I don't know. So how did you get, <laughs> how did you get to start this type of, of art? I think Deanna was mentioning it earlier, but um, I I worked in I worked primarily with people experiencing oh yes that's right yeah of course, violence of in their relationships uh -huh. mainly in their home relationships mm -hmm. and so I kept bringing home a lot of work because I would just think about the mm -hmm. trauma all day mm -hmm. you know working with people and then going home and then being like what course cases are coming up what's going on like what do I have to be um, thinking about and I needed to find something to self-care with to stop my brain from like mm -hmm. going mm -hmm. um, and that's how paper cutting came into my life. Wow. That, that <laughs> so I'm telling you, it sends me out. You would have to have something, you know, to be able to just kind of like you say, turn it off. And yeah. So are you still working in that, in the social work at all? I, I have not worked mm -hmm. in it for a couple years now. I've been paper cutting full time for about this is my third year, mm -hmm. so the start of my okay. third year. Um, so yeah, I've moved into that. I still work in a one-on-one -on -one capacity with certain people, mm -hmm. but I don't work for an actual establishment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that really is a beautiful story. I, you know, you, well, you can <laughs> tell just by talking to you that you have a great heart. Oh, that's and, so sweet. Um, so I think that, that really is beautiful how you, you know. Uh, came into this to like you said self-heal you know you, yeah because you know, that's i think what happens a lot of times people get into things like that and, and they lose themselves because they you do. get so involved with with others yeah um, so well that's amazing i can't wait to come back and see it <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> i think like the job of us artists is to really imagine worlds and create them um you know and so like you know, Eddie and I and all these other artists, like we imagine these worlds that we want to see and um, that we we want there to be peace and love and kindness Aww, and serenity, you know? So th that's what we're doing yeah. here. We're creating places yes. that people can come and experience something mm -hmm. that, you know, they're and not And you're sharing it with all of us. Yeah. And, and that's, that's really meaningful. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> thank, well, thank you, guys. You. Thank you. Yeah. What are your plans when you leave here, when you graduate? Ooh, I'm not sure yet. I think that this year is this year is definitely going to open up opportunity. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to see, um, yeah, whether I get to open up a studio here, mm -hmm. whether I get to have a little shop, whether I, um, I don't know. I, I'm not sure what's going to happen, but it's really good to figure out the flow of the island. Mm -hmm. When people come, what people like. Mm -hmm. Uh, whether or not my art does well in this environment. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that we're all learning here, that's right? right? That's yes. why we're open and available. So. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Well, thank you again so much. We really do appreciate you <laughs> taking the time out. Yes, of I made a work. big mess here, so sorry uh, about that. <laughs> oh, that balloon is beautiful, Diana. Yeah, can I, you come and get a close-up of this balloon? That is so pretty. I have not figured out how to frame it yet, but oh, well, we're, 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 we're figuring right. it out as we go. <laughs> I mean, just look at all that detail. Diana, you and I would kill each other if we tried to do something like this at work. <laughs> you guys should come take a class. Yes, we should. We all, we, take, we will. We all give classes. Right. So. All righty. Well, thank you. And yeah. who is this? Uh, I'm Eddie Lacken. All right. And? I'm here and um, well, this is some of my work that I, I do. I got. Yeah. Oh, I was standing over here and I just thought you you don't see it until you you did this. Yes. Really? Yeah. Well, that's actually like the point of the the um, artwork. Uh huh. That like artwork has to be appreciated for art to uh, fulfill its um its purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this artwork, uh, it only reacts to the viewer. So it, that's, it happens like how you mentioned it, that if you see it from far away, 
Um, it just looks like a it's, black box. Right. But until you walk up to it and engage it, it like engages back at you. Wow. So, <laughs> Who would have thought? That's really interesting. Yeah. yeah it kind of surprised me. Oh. So it's wow. Can you see it in the camera? <laughs> Well, get over there closer and engage with it. <laughs> that is so neat. So, and you're from where? Uh, from Brownsville, and I guess Matamoros also, because I have like a lot of people, like a lot of people from the area. We have ties on both sides of the river, mm -hmm. and sure. we, we go back and forth. So right. I can't really say like I'm just like 100% from Brownsville because because mm -hmm. now I have some friends from Matamoros and right. back and forth. And sometimes I try to bring that in also in my artwork. Um, I don't know, like this piece is a. Uh, I don't know if you've ever played a uh, loteria. It's mm -hmm. like a, it's a I mean, Mexican bingo. Yes. Yeah, so this is one of the cards from the loteria, okay. but uh, reimagined in a different style. Right. So this one's um, El Cotorro. Wow. Very so, interesting. Yeah. And so how did you get started? Have you, since you were young, were uh, you interested in being creative? And no, I actually started as a hobby. Like I was really into architecture. Um, oh, okay. And then so like, um, like one day I thought like um, like I'm gonna be an architect and like I never even tried drawing or something and so I just uh, I decided to uh, take up on drawing I got in a class I ended up for a class and then I just started drawing and drawing and then um, well I didn't finish college so like architecture wasn't my way mm -hmm. but then I just since I discovered art I just kept on looking mm -hmm. towards art and eventually I just started uh, doing more and more and more art until like I I guess I turned it into my career. Right. Well, you yeah. obviously have a, 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 an innate talent for it, don't you? Mm -hmm. And tell us about this one. Oh, well, this is um, this is a mixed media piece. It's kind of, a, a lot of, in a lot of my work, I try to uh, like mix uh, or combine different things. So even like, um, I'll take like a traditional like technique, like a, it's like a nude or, or like a, a traditional theme but apply um, contemporary uh, materials or, or supports on it so, so you get um, hopefully something new and interesting. Well, it so is that, very interesting. So that's yes. what this is. Um, and this is marble dust and it's um, on burlap. So all that is like experimenting. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I like to experiment a lot. And, right. And I think it makes the uh, work uh, more interesting. Diane, and is this the one that you posed for? <laughs> I know you were telling me that you did that, but I wasn't sure who it was that you, you know. Um, so this is on burlap, so you get that texture from the burlap. And then marble dust, you said? Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah, mix with paint and blue and mm -hmm. something else. But then that's how it turned out. But I mean, where do you, okay, so let's just, for example, the marble dust. Mm -hmm. Where do you even come up with that? Oh, well, that I went to a workshop and um, some artists from Tijuana came. And, uh -huh. To, actually, he went, came to Matamoros and I went there and took the class. But his work was more abstract. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, well, that abstract work or the abstract look to it, maybe mm -hmm. I can apply it to like a figurative art. Mm -hmm. And so that's like, a, like I was saying, like I like a mix, mixed up um, techniques and, right. and themes. So that's what I did. I took like a um, work that was meant to be abstract and I applied it to a figurative um, painting. And this came up. You so see yeah. how these minds work? <laughs> no, not this mind. These <laughs> minds, so creative. And how they come up with this stuff, I, it's beyond my brain, that's for sure. Yeah, sometimes we don't know either. So. Yeah, so, well, you know. But how wonderful that, I keep saying wonderful, like I've said it a hundred times, I gotta come up with something else. But it is, it's so wonderful that, that you all are here to share this with us, with this community, with the people that I mean, you actually get to really share it with people that come in here, don't you? Yeah, that's what I've noticed, and, and that's probably one of the, I think the biggest benefits for me so far is that I get to um, um, see how people react to my artwork, mm -hmm. like on a daily basis or whenever I'm here, as opposed to normally, as an artist, you just, um, you see that like the day of the exhibition, and then you go home and your artwork stays there, and then right. you never see how people react to yes, it. Yes, right. So we get like immediate feedback, like a lot more constantly than, than norm, like a normal artist, I guess. Right, yes. So that's, I think, like one of the biggest benefits right, from, from right. being here on the ABI. And hopefully they all fall in love with it since you're getting <laughs> their immediate reaction to it. I don't know how you could not fall in love with all of this. It's just incredible, really beautiful. So what are you working, what are you working on right now? Um, 
Well, nothing in particular, but mm -hmm. uh, like when I have nothing to do, I'll just draw like, um, I'll pick like a random animal or something and I'll just sketch it. Or Jojo, do, like, a portrait. he needs to come and sketch Jojo. Our, our chamber mascot is a macaw. Oh, definitely. A Catalina macaw. She's real big and, <laughs> and you could come and sketch her anytime. Okay. Because she likes to be, had, she likes attention. So as long as you're paying attention to her, she'll be happy. Well, thank okay. you. We appreciate you. it. And we're so glad that you are able to bring your art to life here and share with all of us. It's, it's really wonderful. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't this fun getting to meet the artist? So uh, let's walk over here. Now, you saw the art that was behind us when we did your interview. Deanna, uh, whose are these? Are these previous students? Or, yes, uh, so this is a mixture of uh, everyone's work. So this is Jose Lozano's, mm -hmm. the uh, classically inspired painter. Mm -hmm. um, and he, both of those two smaller works over here are also his. Mm -hmm. Again, he's super inspired by the local landscape. Right. So if you're looking for something that is a statement piece, but very classy mm -hmm. and um, academic based uh, it's perfect for you and then this is Eva uh, the paper cutting artist this okay. is a new piece of hers this is actually a local snail that was found recently um, so like you've heard her say she's super inspired by the local flora and fauna right. and if you come into the gallery you get to read the just the intention behind it it's always so purposeful and really powerful um, and then, of course, these, these beautiful, big, bold pieces mm. that I'm sure you couldn't take your eyes off of is done by Audrey Larissa. It was the first artist I talked about, our subconscious painter, and like I said, she draws with oil pastels, or oil pencil, and creates these really abstract, colorful, bold, yes. um, but completely gorgeous images. Right. And right now, she just finished up a bird series. Um, she was really inspired by birds as a, a symbolism for transformation and change and taking flight. So she's sold quite a few of those pieces. These will be gone sure, soon, I'm sure. And she'll actually be moving to now a new series of um, ocean scenes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, plenty of inspiration for that around here, isn't yeah. there? Uh, so everything on this, this is the gallery. So these are all for sale. Uh, you know, we buy for yourself, buy it for your friends. Um, I could certainly picture some of these in my house uh, very easily. Can I show y'all one more? That's really we neat. We love to. Yeah, it's over here. It's on our uh, museum pedestal. And oh. this is a recent work from our leather artist, Dawn. That's leather? That's leather. So this is her first sculpture piece. Oh it took God. her weeks, oh, months is. to do because it's very new for her. Wow. Um, but she's got her first sculptural fine art piece done. So I imagine she'll be able to create more and more as she really gets into that it and learns. Incredible. Look at that. You know what, Diana? We need to get her to do our trophies next year for Ladies Kingfish Tournament. That's Wouldn't that be fun? Idea. Yes. That is really amazing. Wow. Such talent. Hmm. And um, some more back here. Now this is one of his, one of Jose's, Jose's uh, ceramic, pieces. ceramic pieces. Yes. Mm -hmm. If he was here, he'd tell you it was one of his favorite pieces he ever made. From, oh really? Yeah, from his what he says is his first, I don't know, batch of ceramics, which I'm mm -hmm. sure is not true. I'm sure he made his first ceramic piece a long time ago. But... An ashtray for his grandfather or something, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> honestly, right. you never know. Really but he does really it? love this piece. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we've had quite a few people very interested in it. Mm -hmm. And it's very, um, I don't know the word for it. I guess funny is the only thing that comes to mind because uh, artists are so fond of their some pieces that hold a lot of value to them that it's actually hard to see them go. So. Right. But we'll just tell them to double the price and then maybe we'll get to keep it <laughs> we'll a little bit it. longer, right? <laughs> well, that's beautiful. Yes. 
Well, I think, um, is there anything else in particular that you would like to show us, Diana? You want to scan the back of the room here and see some of the other? Matt, did you have a wood artist before? We did. Previously? Okay. Yeah, so that's I've seen a lot of wood pieces around. Yes, we still have quite a few of his items because he had been creating so many items for so long that he had quite a few okay. to continue to sell here, which we were really excited about. His name's Ivan Benavides. Um, his work actually started, the, his year started with creating these really gorgeous wooden bowls that are durable, useful, and salvaged out of Texas wood. And it's really exciting because his year started in that way and ended in a completely new inspired way so it it moved from useful items that he still loves to create to also really imaginative decorative and symbolic items right that's lovely you can also find his work at quinn gallery and at the art lounge oh okay he okay. will yeah after his items here are sold um, he actually had a really amazing opportunity in Roma, Texas. So I don't know if ABI will be receiving any more of his items, but um, Roma. again, in Roma, really? Texas. Wow. Yep. Who would have thought? Yeah. Well, I know who this is, obviously. Yes. <laughs> Those are cute. Those are beautiful. Oh, I love the owl. Oh, and another one. Yes. Oh, and this is Audrey. Okay, of course you can tell this one with all the colors. That's right. And another one of hers, obviously. Yes. Absolutely. Her all right. Her well, I got to tell you, this was really fun. And you are such a great hostess. <laughs> you're a great hostess, And, you're, too. and you're, uh, your artists are just as sweet. Uh, well, I shouldn't say But they're the cutest thing. I, I know. Uh, but you must be so proud of them. I am. I mean, just to see how they're growing and, you know, really transforming their art. What a, like I said, you got a great job, girl. I do. I told, I said it, that I'm, I genuinely feel like I've been made a better person for being around artists. Well, I can see why. Yes. Yeah. They're really incredible can. people. They mm -hmm. live by their values. And it's really exciting that we have such, such uh, forward thinking people who are right. on the island. Right. Well, that's it for our first episode of SPI Chamber today. And we want to thank Deanna Powell, who is the program director for the Art Business Incubator at Abbey. And don't forget, they've got uh, an event coming up in June, um, several. So you can keep, you can check the Chamber news, newsletter each week because we always post the events that the Abbey has coming up. And so that's a great place to find out about them. And please, please, next time you go by, don't pass. Stop. Pull in. If it's just for five minutes, I, I'm telling you, I, I feel great after being here. It's just an absolutely incredible place. And the, the whole atmosphere, uh, the people, it's, it's beautiful. So please stop by. Uh, make sure you, we will be back next Thursday morning at 10 a.m. Um, I'm not going to tell you where we're going. It's going to be a surprise. So please join us again. Um, okay, so listen, uh, what we're doing here, we do for our chamber members, which of course the Abbey is a chamber member. If you're not a chamber member, you need to call us because you're, gonna, you're missing out on a lot if you're not. Um, the chamber is here to help our small businesses to grow and flourish. And I mean, that's what we do. That's what, you know, we're here for. So if you're not a member of the chamber, take it from Deanna. Do it. See, there you go. <laughs> now who could resist a pretty girl telling you to do it? So we will see you. Thank you. Next Thursday. Yes. <laughs>